Hello comrades, my name is Fritz and welcome back to F1 Challenge 99-02 and welcome to the wonderful Spa Francochamps. Nestled in the heart of the Ardennes forest in Belgium, this 4.3 mile circuit is fast, flowing, historic and treacherous. It is a circuit that is a favourite for many drivers throughout the season and it's one which F1 should really cling on to. The 70,000 strong crowd which will greet us on race day will no doubt spur on Alessandro Zanardi and the Williams car at this race weekend. Now we do have some setup changes to go through in practice four, and we're just going to give the car a quick shakedown as we head into the race weekend proper. I'm going to give you a track guide once we start to get round the first outlap, and then we'll see where we go from there. I've been doing quite well in the previous practice sessions, so this should be very interesting indeed. Down the hill now to this very tricky braking zone. You've got to make sure you brake early. You don't want to be under steering off into the gravel traps. This is very much an old school circuit, um, built during the uh, the pre uh, the pre Second World War era during Nazi occupation. Of that. Well, before that actually, it was a uh, 1937 when Hermann Lang and the Daimler uh, set a lap record here, driving for the auto sorry no, the, yeah the Daimler team under under Nazi production banners which is very interesting, how times have changed, and yes, this circuit still remains one of my very, my own favourite circuits on the Formula 1 calendar, and as I said, it's old school, it's twisty, it's dangerous, it's somewhat narrow in places, and this is actually where the old track, the very long track, similar to the Nordschleif, uh, actually joins on, you can see where the road actually breaks away there, a bit like the, uh, the final Parabolica corner at Monza, where it joins the old banking, that was used during the war era. Very fast corner, this final left-hander, this is called Blanchemont, as we head down into the bus stop chicane. This bit of the circuit has undergone several uh, renovations over the years. They've changed the course that the chicane has run. Looks very different now, since 2007. As we start our first flying lap, breaking hard into La Source, I'm going to have to apply more steering lock to the car's chassis setup later on. And now this is where things get very exciting. This is the Eau Rouge Radeon Complex. Three Gs of compression as we hurtle into this little dip here. And you can't actually see the blind exit onto Radeon and it, as it kind of squirts us out across the tarmac onto the very long Camel Straight. Important here for your car to have adequate straight line speed. We don't have enough straight line speed at the moment, so that is likely to compromise our lap time. This corner is off camber and slightly uphill, so you can afford to break slightly later into Lake Coombe. Malmody, a nice smooth right-hander, just make sure you get the line right, just to set you up for Rivage here, this very tricky off-camber right-hander that we encountered on the previous lap. Keeping it nice and slow, the front end's starting to bite, and as we, the frame rate just tanks there. Bit of a tank slapper actually, speaking of tanks, this is, uh, and that's not Malmody, I'm not entirely sure what that corner is, but this is Pio we can be quite brave through Pio not as brave as we can in later uh, Formula 1 cars. The 1999 cars don't have anywhere near as, down, as much downforce as I would like, but hey, that's all we have to work with, so let's do our best. A bit wide into the first part of the Fanny chicane, not losing too much time. Want to maintain a high angle of attack into the Fanny chicane, just so you don't end up understeering off. Uh, this corner is flat in the 2002 cars. However, not so today. We are really suffering from a lack of downfalls indeed. Damon Hill at this particular circuit set a lap record of 1 minute 57 point something in the uh, Williams Renault Formula 1 car. And yeah, we probably aren't going to beat that today. Although we can try once we've made a few setup adjustments. This episode might be a bit longer simply because the laps at this circuit are, well, longer simply. Um, hopefully we're not going to be able to spend too much time in practice because I would like to get into qualifying and, of course, have a race. We're going to have one last shot at a practice lap before I set up the car for qualifying. We'll do, we'll take the qualifying and then we'll see how that goes and we'll end up doing our usual race. Let's see if we can't find more time in sector two and three. I think that's where we're going to be making up most of our uh, time this race weekend. Our split time is bang on zero at the moment, so let's wait until we cross the first sector line. Oh, another breaks into Kemmel. We are six tenths of a second up, that's good. Don't lose it all. Uh, we can probably try being a bit braver in some places. We're up to third position, 
at a provisional third position in practice four. I doubt that's going to last. I'm aiming for top ten in this practice shootout. If we can do a bit better than that, as in get into top five, or maybe fairly high in the top ten at least, then that will be quite good. We can probably be a bit braver into Piron, making sure, and that's immediately very wide. We're going to run over the gratings. You don't want to do that here. And we almost got things horribly wrong there. Use all of the track on the run up to the Fanny Chicane. Break early. Break often. Use the apex. Stay to the right, and then increase the angle of attack into the second part of Fanny. And then run it out onto Stavolo. Very nice. This is going quite well. And it often feels in Formula One like you pull out a lap of your life, and it's about three tenths per second slower. Very demoralising, so you've got to avoid that. And we actually, speaking of the lap of your life, it is you know, 1.3 seconds up on our previous split, so this is going quite well indeed. Looks like taking a new line into those twisty, uh, fast flowing sections of the track do improve our overall lap time. Breaking hard at 100, take your time on the exit, don't bounce the curbs too hard, then pitch you into a spin, and it uh, looks like we're doing okay so far. Finds Harold Friends in the Jordan, 158.1, it's 2 minutes 3 for us in Zanardi's Williams. I'm going to go ahead and cut to a qualifying session, I've got a few setup changes to make. And uh, yeah, that should be dandy, I think we can find 2 seconds, that should be doable with some setup changes. Including reducing the amount of downforce we generate on the straights, just to improve their top speed. And we'll see where that gets us. Anyway, that's it for me, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, here we are, about to begin qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix. I've actually reduced the downforce, and then Saturday morning dawned, and it's absolutely bucketing it down. I'm on inters today, so hopefully we can generate some grip, and not really worry about that lack of downforce. Don't cross the pit line, that could warrant us a penalty. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to take a rouge flat like we did on Friday qualifying. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take it, be a bit conservative over the top of Radion. We are running a bit wide there already. Had a bit of a lift, but uh, yeah, we don't want to be taking any risks so far. I've upped the, uh, the brake pressures, I've upped the engines to maximum, I've improved the front wheel camber, so hopefully we should get more grip on that front end, and that's done absolutely nothing. Getting the car very sideways into the second part of Lake Coombe, into Malmody, and, yeah, cars sliding all over the place. Mostly probably due to the wet weather. Let's break early for Rivage and uh, find the grip. No, it's not there. Where the hell has the grip gone? Take it easy. Don't use all the curbs. Curbs are dangerous here at Spa, especially in the wet. Cross the white line and you are history. Luckily we kept it on the track there. I mean, if you're going to be turning and hitting the gas and staying on the power right around the curbs here, then, well, you're going to be in a bit of trouble as we get the on very wrong. Can we keep it straight? Yes, we can. Just about and running over the gratings, kept it out of the barrier, we don't want to end up in the gravel at Piron, because you are not going to stop, you're going to hurtle into the barrel, into the barriers, and you will destroy your car. Always a fun challenge at Spa, trying to take Eau Rouge flat out, and we'll try to do that in the race as much as we dare. Uh, Jacques Villeneuve in, I think it was 1998, I might be wrong, no sorry, it was 1999, yes it was 1999 this season actually, tried to take Eau Rouge flat in his um, respective car. I can't remember what car is the team. I think it's the Footwork Heart car. I can't remember. But yeah, he tried to take it flat and he ended up crashing very hard. He told Ricardo Zonta in a bet that he wouldn't be able to take it flat either. He took was it Zonta actually met, ended up taking it flat as well. Crashed in exactly the same way as, as Villeneuve. So uh, yeah. If you're going to go Formula 1 racing, don't listen to Jacques Villeneuve. Now here's where the steering lock should come in. And uh, that is done precisely nothing as we begin our time lap here at Spa. Here we are now, ready to start the 1999 Belgian Grand Prix from Spa Francorchamps. We qualified in a slightly less than impressive 12th position, but we can really go out in full force and try to improve on that today. Now watch for the lights in the top left of your screens on the gantry, and hold. Lights out, away we go, we get away relatively okay, well, it's a slightly longer hold than I'm used to. The sound of the trainer's car sliding ahead of us, let's gain some positions back here at the start, getting boxed in at turn one. 
as cars colliding ahead. Let's make sure they get into trouble to their own. We pick them off as we hurtle into Eau Rouge. Are we going to be side by side into this terrifying corner? Let's find out. Yes, we are. Well, not quite, but yeah, running over the top of Radion, not quite getting our nose alongside Yano Trulli here, and Eddie Irvine is right behind us in that scarlet Ferrari. Can we get Trulli up into Le Coups? Let's find out. Breaking a bit late. Stay with him. Coulthard has got past our teammate Ralph Schumacher just ahead of us. Irvine challenging for position as we hurtle into Malmody. We can challenge Trulli on the brakes. Is that Heinz Harold Frenzen up ahead? Yeah, I think it is. Wow, it's a two-car overtake for us both. Uh, Trulli trying to overtake the Jordan. We don't have enough space to go the, through there through Rivage, but hopefully we can take him out on the next lap. Using a bit too much inside curb as we hurtle down towards Puan. Can we get back into contention? Maybe a bit conservative into Puan. That should be just about okay. Running wide using all of the track on the run down into the Fanny Chicane. Can we get past Yano Trulli? Stay to the inside. Not quite as bitchy fast into the second part of the Fanny Chicane. And the run down to Stavolo and the bus stop is certainly possible indeed. Irvine all over the back of us here. And going very wide into the second part of Stavolo. Irvine's got a run. He's up the inside. That's a catastrophic error from myself. That's Heinz Harold Frenzen in the Jordan. It must be Damon Hill in the other Jordan. Can we take the second part of Blanchemont flat out? Yes, we can. Well, bit of oversteer there. That's that's really not comfortable at like 200 miles an hour. Irvine's jinking left and right, bouncing over the curbs, getting a big oversteer moment. Frenzen goes by, 10th place. That's a net gain of two positions. Can we do any better than that? We should have the run in into La Source Hairpin. And Irvine too, getting late on the brakes now, back in contention with Trulli. This should be an exciting race. Reach the halfway point once we come around the bus stop for the second time. And hopefully we can tackle Ralph Schumacher by the end of the race. Everyone else, well, a majority of the field is already having the straight line speed advantage over us. On the Camel Straight, Irvine challenging for the dive. I'm going to move to the inside, there's one defensive manoeuvre. Let's keep it tidy, keep it sane. Let's not try anything, not use too much of the curb there. Irvine, fair and square, I think, defence from ourselves. Not argy barging ourselves through the field like we did at Silverstone with Heinz Harald Frenzy. We had a bit of an encounter with him at Luffield before the final corner and spinning out of control at Rivage. Irvine is going to go past the Ferrari. Nothing we can do about that. Hard on the brakes into this corner here. Irvine running very wide. How the hell has he managed to keep it on the track? We've got to run into Puan. He does break a bit early here. There it is. The 1999 car cannot take this corner flat. Bit of braking is required. So yes, getting past Irvine. Really trading positions here in the mid-pack. Breaking into Fania. We've left the door wide open. That should be okay. Getting the angle of attack right into Fania. That's very good indeed. Can we take Stavolo a bit better this time? Be a bit more conservative on the entrance. Irvine goes through once again. No, he doesn't quite. That's okay. Moving out onto that runoff area to start the third lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. I don't think Irvine can really challenge at this stage, but when we get into that upper part of the track, that high elevation change of the circuit, I think Irvine can really start to pull out the stops. Let's not use that big humpy curb because that did cause us some problems with Frenson on the last lap. Getting a bit wrong over the, uh, over the final edging there of the, uh, the grandstand pit complex. Nice and tight into the source. Slow in and fast out. That is gained eight tenths of a second over Irvine. Can we hunt down Yano Trulli in the Prost? I think it'll be the first time we've been beaten by Yano Trulli this season. I don't know, running a bit wide over Radion. Irvine will once again have the straight line speed advantage. Trilly gaining another second over us here. My voice getting very tired. Once again, moving to the inside. One defensive manoeuvre. Breaking hard for... Whoa, getting very wrong on the brakes there. The weight transfer shifting the car around. That's not good at all. It might be best, once it truly gets beyond a certain attacking range, it might be best if we just start going into defensive mode and just concentrating, that's where we spun off last time, concentrating on keeping the Ferrari of Eddie Irvine behind us. After all, it would do us good for championship points. 
Irvine really not coming up to the standard of a Ferrari driver, I don't think. Jaguar, perhaps. Maybe I'm being a little harsh, but yes, that is just my opinion. One of the very few Irishmen to race in Formula 1, and uh, yeah, that's got to be notable indeed. Mary Wide and Tafania, keep it together. Take a shallow line here, because we don't want to be jinking on over the track. That could cause issues for Irvine. And also for our own defensive standpoint. Running very wide over the gratings at Stabilo. That's cost us about two or three tenths of a second. Irvine wheeling us in. We've actually got a train of cars behind us. This is rather embarrassing. Williams is painfully slow here. We're not even that much slower than our teammate, but it's causing us to lose a lot of time. There, in fact, is Yano Trin in the Prost car. Bit wide, bit too quick into the second part of the bus stop chicane. No harm done there as we start to begin the final lap. We start to begin, that is just a tautology and a half. To begin the final lap of the Belgian Grand Prix, it's going to be an 8th place finish if we can keep Irvine behind us. Uh, not our best finish this season, we've had worse though, so we'll have to take what we can get. Now I should mention there's usually a kind of summer break between Hungary and Belgium, we're not going to do that, we're going to try and get the season finished as fast as possible because, well, I have my whole life to look forward to and I can't spend all of it watching Formula 1 as much as I'd like to. We're getting our fuel warning light here as we go very deep into Lake Coombs. Irvine skittering past in the Ferrari. Can we challenge? Can we? We're going to stay with him for the rest of this lap. We might be able to have him under brakes at Rivage. There we go. Yes, very nice indeed. Frenson is looking for a position over Irvine. Doesn't look like he was close enough through Rivage. I am commentating all of this looking through my wing mirrors alone, so apologies if you do spot anything that is inaccurate behind me. Just watch the mirrors and uh, tell me what you think. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate on what's ahead of me, that's arguably more important, and I think Yano Trillian might have encountered a small issue, because Damon Hill has traded positions here with us. I haven't seen any yellow flags, so maybe Yano Trillian's car still has some life left in it yet. Or maybe he's dropped the anchors at Blanchemont and we're going to go soaring past him on this f in, in, the di in the dying moments of the Belgian Grand Prix. But it looks like we're safe from Irvine at the moment, and uh, Hakkinen wins, followed by Schumacher, with two tenths of a second separating the leaders. Can Irvine challenge into the bus stop? It doesn't look like he can. Let's go very defensive, let's check them all up into the final corner, and then flat on the run, over the line, and that is it, the Belgian Grand Prix. And, uh, okay, not too much of a train, it's just a very long line of cars and a similar speed with an average speed of 130 miles an hour. Mega Hakkinen in the McLaren team is your victor. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed watching the season so far. I do hope you enjoyed this very exciting Belgian Grand Prix. Um, can't remember which circuit is next. It might be Monza, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, my name is Fritz, and I will, of course, see you next time.